Genius. It's the swingingest place in town. Club Genius. Your IQ will come around from green to brown, from up to down, from Stalingrad to Vegas. Hey, open up them pearly gates for Club Genius. Look out, hey, seven pillars of Club Genius. When I hear the word culture, I reach for my TV guy. I reach for my TV. I reach for Club Genius. The only place to be. Hey, Club Genius. The only show to see. Mary had a little lamb. Louisiana had food stamp fraud. And you got Club Genius. No cattle mutilations here. Club Genius. Advance. To the rear at Club Genius, Club Genius, Club Genius. Welcome to Club Genius, starring Rudy Cheeks. Rudy's guests tonight at the club are. Rubber Rodeo, political candidate William O'Flair, songwriter Larry Brusick, B.A., and a visit to St. Rocco's Feast. And now, here's the host of Club Genius, Rudy Cheeks! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, great to be here. <clears throat> kind of great to be here. And, of course, you can tell uh, I've uh, got a cold, a uh, seasonal cold. Seasons are changing. This is when you do get colds. Uh, a lot of people out there in the sticks, in the rural sections of our country, find that, that you have a... Uh, you, you can tell when the seasons are changing, when the, the leaves change and the colors turn from green to brown. Us people who live in urban areas know that you actually can tell when the seasons are changing by the leaving of the bums from the inner city area. They usually come in these, uh, they come in by the van fulls, by the bus loads uh, in the early spring and stick around all summer sleeping on the park benches, etc. And uh, then when it winter gets cold, a lot of them leave and uh, we'll be saying goodbye to many of these, uh, my fine friends. What we'd, what we'd like to uh, <clears throat> talk about now is that my plan to give these bums a proper send-off. That's an idea I had, gee, a couple of years ago. I say, let's rent a big bus, rip out the seats, put in some hay, you know what I mean? Make them feel comfortable and be able to relax. Get that bus. And then a week beforehand, you pass out flyers downtown area saying, let's get to, uh, let's go. Oh, geez, I'm losing I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to play to the audience here. You get the flyers to pass them out and say, big free picnic, free food, free wine, meet on the mall at exactly 10 a.m. So only pass them out to the bums in the downtown area. Pass them out. But what, you, oh, you're shooting a reaction shot now. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Pass these, pass these out to the bums. They'll show up there, of course. They'll be there. No problem. Get them to take a bus to the middle of probably the richest suburb in the state. Give them, a pint of, give them a pint of wine before I go there. Give them a pint of good and cheap wine. Let them get out there, then leave. Just leave them there. And ring doorbells. <laughs> That's my idea of a joke. Okay. Uh, what, what, oh, you wanted to change the paintings? Oh, oh hold on a minute. We're going to change the paintings on the set. We've had them for two weeks. This is it. So, um, <laughs> take them down. This is, this is, uh, this is, Victoria Wolf's work. Thank you very much, Victoria. Vicky, when should, when should, and this is, of course, Stacey Carr's work coming down. Vicky, when should, when should you do this, uh, when did you do these paintings? About a month ago, okay. Already sold, right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. See, that's a good one. Let's see if we can get it kind of straight. Okay, whoa. Uh, That looks good. Yeah. Okay. It's no need for no need for severe angles there. 
All right. Different paintings on the set, of course. Victoria Wolf's paintings. Now, uh, I guess we should uh, shift to a commercial now, huh? Is that what we're going to do? <laughs> Let's go to a commercial. Okay. I'm going to try to take some Comtrex or something. I'll be back in just a minute. Well, yeah, is the thing. That regulates what goes through the car, right? Goes through and the car. And how much gas is fed to the engine? Yes. That's well, right. if the car is stalling out, then I'd say that something's wrong with that regulator. And if that's the carburetor... But you've worked on that before. Oh, wait a minute now. You're blaming me for fouling it up? No, I'm not blaming you. I know what I'm doing when I work on that car. Have you ever wished you could just pick up the phone and say something to that guy talking on your TV set? Have you ever hoped the interviewer would ask him your question? Have you ever really wanted to get in on the discussion? Or challenge the guy and give him your view of the facts? Well, here's your chance. Call Steve Cass and his guests on On the Line and speak your mind on live TV. It's your chance to put your own questions to the guest. Get in on a lively discussion. Spark a hot debate with some fascinating people involved in exciting and unusual businesses. Rhode Island's top model, an NFL player, popular newspaper columnists, a professional ghost hunter, a belly dancer, and her exotic and dangerous partner, a former beauty queen. These are only a few of the personalities to have appeared on On the Line. Join Steve Cass and his guests by getting On the Line every Thursday night from 5 to 6, only on Channel 45. I say I'm suffering from illness. I'm sorry, folks. Tonight might not be a little smooth, <laughs> as it's been in the past, of course. And uh, we have our first guest with us, and they're already hawking that record shamelessly. Folks, a couple members of the band Rubber Rodeo, Gary Lee and Doug Allen from Ru Rubber Rodeo. Great to have you, fellas. Here, I take it that that's your album. That's it. That's the one. And um, and uh, you fellas just uh, this just came out what about a month ago, huh? couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago and um, you're on your way to uh, this is a this is a local band by the way a, uh, a Rhode Island group and they're on their way to the West Coast am I right that's it and there's there's the record itself let's show, see what that record actually looks like under the cover there it is it's black and um, so it's, it's round it's round as well it's round that's right and they made it themselves I'm very proud of it good work oh just a second one like it and it rolls like a wheel. Okay, kids can have fun at home, too. <laughs> I'll tell you, these rock and roll bands, they think of everything, you know what I mean? Um, well, fellas, so you guys are going out to the uh, to Los Angeles, I understand. Uh, and you leave, um, what, a couple weeks? A um, couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, end of October. That's, that's the date I heard. What do you think? Not really sure, but somebody's taking care of it for you, I take it, right? Okay, fellas. Well, now, I understand you have a, uh, I, we have a videotape of, of one of your songs here. And, uh, but you guys are performing, but it's, but it's actually, um, it's a Dolly Parton number entitled Jolene, right? That's it. Okay, well, sh shall we roll that tape, maybe? No, let's not roll that tape. Okay, well, they're not quite ready to roll that tape. <laughs> Let's ask these fellas. Did you guys eat dinner this evening? Huh? They did. And was it good? Was it cowboys type food? Superb, superb. You ate here in the Cranston Johnson area, I'll take it. Right, right. What about <laughs> Mama Roses? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I guess we are about ready now to look at that videotape. We're all set. Let's take a look at it. Rubber Rodeo, Jolene.
Rubber Rodeos, Jolene. Uh, the Dolly Parton song, the same name. <laughs> Actually, it's the same song. It's just that they do it kind of differently from Dolly. Um, embarrassing tape, fellas, but a great song, and of course, you guys are swell. Now, um, speaking of embarrassments right now, a moment for religion. Brothers and sisters, I want to talk about deliverance this evening because God has delivered, and I mean delivered, the new Rubber Rodeo record. Hallelujah. Amen. But by the grace of his own gentle hand and the insanity of our managers, Bill Fold, we now can deliver to you a beautiful EP as you've seen here tonight. Now, Rubber, rubber Rodeo has, has touched my heart as I think it has touched yours already. And it'll touch you in a very special place soon. I know it will. And you know, if music, if music is the food of love, then Eat Records is a delightful caterer. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. It's a joyful noise. A joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord, it's a, a holy racket. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a boogity beat. It's a straight ahead slap back groove of love that we so crave. I think you know what I'm talking about. Don't you love it? <laughs> I know you do. You know, it, it can kind of cure what ails you. It'll keep the devil away when you're in the shower, and it'll last for up to eight hours. Can I hear you now say hallelujah? Thank you. It will be delivered to your door, to your GE Home Entertainment Center. It will deliver you from all that ails you. It is a vice that you should not abstain from. I think you know what I mean. Now come on down and get it. I mean it. We'll wait for you. Let us pay. Pray. Well, folks, while we're praying, while we're praying for this deliverance of the Rubber Rodeo record, let's go right now to another religious feast, a tape from St. Rocco's Festival just this past summer. And there he is now, folks, St. Rocco himself. Let's take a look at him. He's, he's wearing a funny hat. He's typical robe there. He's, uh, he's showing his knee for some apparent reason, and you can tell he's a family man. He's got a dog. The dog appears to have a, a spinach pie in his mouth, I think, a dog with a spinach pie. So there he is, St. Rocco, and uh, we're going to go into the festival right now here at St. Rocco's and talk to some of the people about St. Rocco. <laughs> St. Rocco's Festival, guys. Do you know anything about St. Rocco? Oh, uh, yes. What, what do you know about St. Rocco? What's your name? Moreno Bartolo. Ah, and you know, and are you a member of this parish here? Yes. Okay, what, what can you tell me about St. Rocco? Not much. I don't know anything about him. Just a minute, I thought you just told me you knew something about him. I know. You don't? No. Well, you don't know what's in the dog's mouth out there. I say a spinach pie. What do you guys say? Uh, you say it's a bone. Okay, it's a large thick bone. What do you think is in the dog's mouth out there? Uh, the St. Rocco statue, guys. I think it's a bone. You think it's a bone? Oh. A bone. That seems to be the consensus. Do you fellas have any uh, feeling about what that is in uh, the dog's mouth out there in the statue of St. Rocco? It's a bone. These guys seem to think it's a bone. And uh, it's not shaped like a bone, but, well, guys, I'll take that into consideration. If any of you guys can get a definitive answer on this, will you, will you see me before the festival's over, will you guys? Okay. All right. Okay. We're going to keep searching, folks. We're going to start to get into the swing of things here at St. Rocco's Italian Festival. It's beautiful out, and it's, hey, hi. Kiss me, I'm Italian. It's the dog got in its mouth, and that's what we're really getting at here. I think it's got a, a seed or a, something for 
St. Rocco. A seed. He looks like he's carrying a very large seed for St. Rocco. It could be. Now, one other question, Scott. Have you seen Rocky Three? Yes, I have. What do you think of the movie? It's excellent. Excellent Great. movie. You're going to go to Rocky Four? Well, if it comes out, I'll be there. Okay, here we are. Hi, what's your name? My name's Dale. Dale, have you been out in front of the church uh, today? Uh, off and on. Off and on. What do you What, what do you think's in that dog's mouth and uh, just beneath uh, Saint Rocco? I just don't know. I don't know. Didn't, didn't get a good look no, at it, huh? No. Okay, have you seen Rocky Three? No. to listen to the strains of Art Conceptual and his orchestra here at the St. Rocco's Festival. I've been looking for the answer to the question about uh, what's in that dog's mouth out there in the statue of St. Rocco. I just haven't been able to find out. Uh, asked a few people. Some say bread, seed of life, bone, spinach pie. There's been a lot of different answers, but no definitive one. But we've had a great time here, and I know I'll be back to this festival again next year. So we'll see you then. field trip this summer to St. Rocco's Festival out in uh, Johnston, the all-gay city. Now, um, we, have, uh, we have with us now a, another guest, and this is, uh, tried to change the tone of the show a little bit more, make it a little bit more serious. We have a candidate for political office. As a matter of fact, he's an independent candidate for the 2nd Congressional District seat currently held by uh, Claudine Schneider. And... Uh, um, well, it's, it's William O'Flair, ladies and gentlemen. William O'Flair. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome, Bill. It's great to have you here. You. And uh, Bill, uh, uh, you're the name of your party. Party. Apparently, nobody really knows the name of uh, your political party. Uh, could, you, could you give us some information on that? Well, I just wanted to leave it as independent until I actually got on the air. I was afraid. You might not take it seriously enough, and I wanted you to see me in person first, realize that I am a serious person about this, before I disclose the name of the party. Uh -huh. And uh, could you could you disclose that name for our viewers in Cranston and Johnston here? The Ducks. The Ducks is the name of the party. Let's, uh... Except in Johnston, we'll be listed as a Ducks. A, a, a ducks, like yes. a, a ducks. Small a, large D. I see, because you want to get on that, that ballot. Um, what, could you tell me exactly what this name uh, ducks means? Uh, well, we were looking for uh, a name that would symbolize what we stood for, and everything we came up sounded like some kind of balloon going across America or uh, mm -hmm. some ship sailing around in Newport. So most of the people that I hang around with uh, were interested in conceiving a grassroots body like to go duck hunting, so we said, why not, we'll call ourselves the ducks. It's uh, quite an interesting story. I, I don't know um, if that's uh, going to be very attractive to the voter uh, in general, but m maybe, I'm not sure. Um, well, we just wanted to keep it simple. We, we played a lot of, around with a lot of things. Ducks are us. Mm -hmm. um, more D, the DAs. The DAs, yeah. Right. Finally, ducks. 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 Well. It's an interesting, it's an interesting name. And, and now, Bill, about yourself, um, what, what, what is your background? Where have you, uh, what kind of jobs have you held? Uh? Well, I'm a native Rhode Islander, and uh, I've held regular jobs, regular jobs. It goes with my background of attending public schools and uh, factory work in the summers as a kid, factory work in the winter as an adult, regular jobs. I've put away uh, some money, and I've uh, been able to open up a few laundromats. Laundromats, yeah. that's interesting. So you're in the laundry business. And software. We also have software. software right. well, that's interesting. I know some, I used to work in some laundromats myself when I was in the nightclub business. Um, um, now, that seems to be, uh, just some, that seems to be a paintbrush there in your pocket. Uh, what, what exactly does that mean? Uh, oh, this is, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can get a shot of this paintbrush here. Uh, well, this has nothing to do with my roots. In fact, it has nothing to do with my the way I earn a living, which is 
just to remind me that I'm not Eddie Beard, I'm not bald, and I'm not uneducated. And I am uncoordinated. I'm not mic'd up either. Right. Well, uh, we're getting that mic'd up, I think. Okay, you got it back in there, Bill. I do carry a real symbol of what I do for a living, though, just to remind me of where I came from. Remind you of your roots. Yes. It's, uh, it's not that uh, hunk of hair there. Uh, after factory work and after uh, dabbling in laundromat is, um, I decided to sell real estate. That didn't pan out, so I've been selling insurance lately to help make ends meet, whole life insurance. The symbol I do carry with me is this diseased lung. <laughs> oh, gee, that's... This, can I touch it without... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, it's, yeah, it's... Now this particular it's one, right. this, yeah. this, this came from the body of a man who smokes cigars. Um, one, <laughs> one or two a day for I think about 10 years, and boom, he was dead at about 36. Uh, this, this is, I carry with my mind. This is, oh, well, I'd like to show you what a healthy lung looks like. You can see the difference for yourself here. All right, there we go. There's one there. Yeah. It is a lot like that okay. Topol toothpaste commercial here. This is the cigar smoker, and this, this is a healthy one here. Okay? Mm. And with that in mind, you might be in a commercial break. I want to take a look at this. You're showing your... Uh, this one of my policies. Uh, oh, what smokers? For sm smoke, Check it special, out. Special smokers policy. This yes. is interesting. I, I, will, I will take a look at this a little bit later on, Bill. Now, I'm interested. Where, where the heck are you getting the money to... Uh, to run this campaign, you know, I mean, they, you must be, have some kind of, you know, to, just to make the posters up and to, you know, just make personal appearances. Where, where's the money coming from? We get it from the little guy in the street, mainly. Uh, no, All right, this little man. We do, we do not accept any contributions from any organized groups, unions, big business, special interests, what have you. Just the little man in the street. And we have a, a small staff of volunteers who go out into the street, the malls, shopping centers, uh, here and there, and they'll just have people approach and they'll tend to draw a crowd with uh, the type of contributions we solicit. I'd like to show you an example of that. Yes. Most of our money comes from uh, this type of solicitation. <laughs> and uh, yeah. we'll strike up a conversation with a, with a fellow and, and just say, you know, what do you think about the economy, what do you think about this, and I'll <laughs> drop the fact that I'm running, and would you like to donate some money? And I'll mention that most of the times, uh, unless you have an income that's large enough for you to write it off on the tax, it's, it's more or less throwing your money out the window because whatever you vote in, uh, whoever you vote in, usually is not voting in your best interest. So we say, instead of rather than throwing the money out the window, wouldn't you rather make an investment for 20 bucks and pick a card? Uh, I'll take the one on the right there. Yeah, this one? closest to me right now. No, nope. you do. Okay, well, in case. And it's 20 bucks out of your pocket to me, and we'll play it a few more times. Yeah. Just to give you a well, chance let me, to let me, let me owe that to you there, Bill. So even though, even though it's the small man we're looking for for money, uh, we usually wind up with the small man giving us two, three hundred bucks. It's, uh, it's an interesting way to, 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 to get that money, uh, uh, Bill. Now, uh, let me ask you about some of the issues here. What, 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 is, what is your uh, opinion of uh, Reaganomics, which is... Reaganomics. Yeah. Well, take the trickle-down theory, for example. Yeah. If I may, I'd like to offer an analogy to that. The trickle-down theory would be like a summer romance, and you have a boy and a girl up on a fire escape on the fifth floor, and a lady, spinster lady that works and lives on the fourth floor. The boy and girl go out in the summertime on the fire escape to make it, and the spinster's below reading the paper on the fire escape to escape the heat. Now, a trickle-down theory would say before the end of the summer is over, that lady on the fourth floor out there reading the newspaper should get pregnant. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. Uh, not in favor of Reaganomics. Okay, well, this is the point of view on Reaganomics. Uh, and uh, you think that some some people uh, do need. What about the employment rate, for instance? Now we're talking about unemployment is skyrocketing over 10 percent now in the country. What do you think? Well, I agree that there is unemployment, but I don't know how much attention should be paid to that. I've had a couple of polls taken, surveys done. And what we've done is, uh, we've more or less proved that there's no such thing as unemployment. Um, we sent workers out to the various Adams drugs in the state of the malls, sent them over to the task to check out the pre-trade policy going on, see how well it's working on. And just based on the number of people in line every day, us and that, dying this step, everyone in Rhode Island makes about, just based on average purchase in all these places, they make about 14 grand. 
Uh, and these are people that are there. We've, tra we've t taken polls all times of the day, so these people obviously are not working, but somehow they've come up with 14,000 grants, about the average, yeah. So I don't, I don't really um, put too much faith in the unemployment figures. Okay, well, now, now quickly, Bill, how about, uh, if you, so you don't think that, you, uh, you think some people do need a job, and uh, what do you think about Claudine's support for uh, the, the uh, job training? Jobs training, I Jobs training at the Democratic uh, opposition. The pork barrel project, pork barrel project. Uh, all right. The idea, I, haven't been able to, I haven't been able to prove she has any connection to a paper company, but what the idea behind that is, take an unemployed person, you put him in a beer room, and you spread all of these unemployment checks and time cards out, and just let the guy go to the bathroom. And after, yeah. over, over a period of weeks, you just put less and less time cards down, less and less employment checks, so there's only one at the door. You open it, pick them out, tell them to get a job, and that's it. A lot of money going for nothing. There's no real market out there for someone to be kicked out of toilet trade. Okay, well, what, pork you barrel. Pork barrel. Now, what, now, do you have any ideas for new jobs? Well, I have a couple. I have a couple. I've, I've uh, checked out uh, Section 8 malling. It's like building malls like Section 8 housing, yes, right? Yes. I, I would like to conceive the Great Wall of Rhode Island. It would, where, where, where would you put these malls now? Well, the beginning of it would be up near uh, Pasco. It would run down through Lincoln, to the Lincoln Mall, uh, mm. make a big arc over Pawtucket, wouldn't touch down. No, hold on, now, now you're in the laundry map. Where, where, where's your laundries? I think that... I have a, well, I have one in Pasco and... Uh, Is it anywhere near this mall? A few of them, maybe, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, taxes, but, but just That's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. Yeah, just okay. A just a coincidence. Well... We're gonna it's, have, like, we're gonna it's like Phil Noel. Phil Noel goes into the offshore oil leasing business. Now, is it just a coincidence that all those rigs, the drill bits, are quahog tongs? That's the real. Re that's the real reason they didn't find any gas. You can only go down so far with a quahog tong. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. Well, listen. Uh, we're gonna leave. We're gonna come back to Bill in just a second. Bill O'Flair in just a minute. But first, we have a brief political message. Of our own. Rudy Cheeks cares about this state. He was born here and he knows the land and the people in a way that only one who cares about Rhode Island can. Rudy Cheeks cares about the environment. He cares about the handicapped. He cares about the family. Rudy Cheeks cares about the threat of nuclear proliferation. Hi, I'm Rudy Cheeks, and I'm not running for political office or anything. I just thought you might be interested in what I care about. I also care about washing machines, weird mannequin parts, locusts, the Everly Brothers, and what they're doing today. Rudy Cheeks, he cares about almost everything. Just thought you might like to know. Well, we're back here with Bill O'Flair, um, Ducks Party candidate for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, second congressional seat. Now, um, you are a newcomer. You're a totally unfamiliar face. Now, how do you go about making people remember you when it comes time? for the vote for them to vote. How, how are they going to remember you as a candidate? There's a lot of work that goes behind it. I don't think many people appreciate what, what has to go through uh, committees and, and just think tank type meetings before you can actually hit the road as a candidate. Uh, people see your face on the screen, they think that's all there is to it. There's a lot of work that goes into it, even before you work up the courage to say, yes, I think I could do this and uh, go out and campaign. My particular background, I've only ex been exposed to uh, a certain circle of people. I haven't been exposed to uh, Cape Verdeans too much. I don't play poker with uh, a lot of basketball players. Um, but for example, uh, you, you try to make them remember you by being able to identify with you. And the way you do that is you identify with them. Um, my steering committee came up with, this is just one example for and I don't want to come off as a racist. This happens to be a black group chart. Um, we hold that up to what? Uh, which camera over here? Now, what, what, what exactly? Uh, oh, over here. Take this camera. Now, what exactly? Can you explain this to us here, Bill? This uh, 
Rather than go in as a very white person and look ridiculous, um, we do research. And one of the things we've been working on is feeling comfortable with, with certain groups. We have a chat like this for Italians and uh, wasps and things. This one happens to be the black one. Um, what you would do with this is you hold this up at eye level uh, to practice the, the high fi which is in vogue now, up here. Uh, bump into a, a brother walking the streets with a radio. It's, it's not exactly the full stop. It's more like of a knuckle tap in practice. Uh, so you bump into a paraplegic on the wall, you just kind of jump into a chair somehow and have somebody kind of push you over and touch elbows with them. And if you're going to be buying something from them, it's, this is a very quick handshake. It's kind of like this. It's real quick. Well, that sounds uh, fascinating. Lots of, Bill, uh, Lots of practice involved. Bill, uh, I want to tell you, that I, that, that, uh, it's been great having you here. Um, I want to ask you quickly just to evaluate Claudine and Jim Ackerman and why you think you're the best candidate before we leave you. I just want to ask that one question. I think that's a vital question. Well, they've been on television. I haven't had quite enough money to do that. It seems to be the big baseball theme this year. Uh, yes, I'm a great guy. I can hit home runs, run around on bases. That's fine if everything's going good. The economy is not too well. Inflation continues. Uh, you mentioned unemployment. I'm not too concerned about it. But what if something goes bad? What if something goes bad? So if these people are baseball players, great baseball players, I'm going to ask you, who do you want up there? The economy is good, but what happens when it goes bad? Fly ball comes out to, to uh, Jim Ackerman here. He gets a bloody nose. <laughs> Schneiding out there playing right field, same thing, smashed. Bloody nose. I'm wearing shades. I know I played right field before. Look at no <laughs> blood. No problem. All right, what do I got? Okay, a man who knows baseball. Okay. Well, that's very vital. And Bill, uh, congratulations in your race for uh, for the second district seat. Bill O'Flair. Bill O'Flair Ducks Party. Vote Ducks. Thank you very much. Vote Ducks. Now we're going to be going to a commercial. And we'll be back in just a few seconds. Vote Ducks. I love you, big dummy. Hello, my name is Tom Suprock. I'm state coordinator for Rhode Island's participation in the National Salute to Vietnam Veterans, November 10th through 14th. For five days, an anticipated quarter of a million Vietnam veterans will gather in Washington, D.C. for computerized reunions, a massive parade by states, and other organized activities. Join us. We have arranged travel and transportation at a greatly reduced price during the period of the reunions and the parades. For more information, call 521-6710. Thank you. Announcing the Real Girl Scouting. Girl Scouting? That's Girl Scouting. Really? Really! The real Girl Scouting, now playing at your local Girl Scout Council. Thank you. We're back. We would like to thank Bill O'Flair. Um, right now, uh, well, we're supposed to be going to this tape, but I'll tell um, this is live TV. I'm sorry. i got to go to the bathroom. I'll be, I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, guys, can you hold? Hang on to stuff, Tom. I'm, I'll be back in a minute. i got to go to the bathroom. What's going on? I don't know. Did you see Eileen? Do you know where he went? Where is? I don't know what. Uh, I, this is ridiculous. 
Okay, good. We got him now. Okay. Okay. Okay, sorry. Sorry, but when you, when you gotta go, you gotta go, you know what I mean? And, uh, I'm sorry, you know I mean? Like, if we were on tape, like all the real TV shows, I wouldn't have to do this. Would I, huh? Go, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the real star of the show, Ian Tracy. There he is. Let's hear it for him, Ian. That's it for you, Ian. That's it. I mean, really, we, the, the, the kid was hogging the camera all last week, busted my cigar. If you can learn to keep his hands off my cigar, we'll be back with Ian next week. But um, actually, next week we're going to have a rerun. <laughs> Aren't we cheap? All right. Now, um, now let's get back to the program, and we have something very, very interesting for you. We have an actual art film created by a local artist, Miss Kim Sherman. So let's go to that now, an art film entitled Hokey Pokey. <laughs> Pokey, a wonderful film. Okay, there it is, Hokey Pokey by Kim Sherman. And now we have a, uh, let me see if I can get to my uh, actual notes here, get this straight now. Now we have a very exciting kind of fellow, somebody that one of our writers, J.R. Mitchell, if you're out there, J.R., and uh, you're seeing this, please don't walk off the show. He said he would quit if he saw Brusick on one more time, but here he is, Larry Brusick, our special guest. <laughs> folks. Larry and I, of course, went to uh, work in college together, and um, Larry, uh, I understand you've got a band together now called the Tomcats. It's true. It's true. It's a South County rock and roll uh, band. Rock and roll experience. You're not originally from South County, though. You're from out of state, right? Um, I'm personally from uh, New Jersey. I live uh, close to Paramus. Close to Paramus, New Jersey. Anybody out there at home in Johnson Cranston area has ever been to Paramus, New Jersey, you can applaud now, okay? <laughs> I think that's enough. Um, well, Larry, uh, how's it going with the band? I understand you guys haven't been doing too well, jobs-wise, money-wise. Well, we, um, we play a lot at Lad School. Uh, we're kind of the house band there. And uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's, uh, it's a lot better than uh, honest work. <laughs> As a uh, well, I, I know very little about that myself, uh, Larry. But, uh, but um, and uh, I know the dishonesty of scamming the state for money playing at, at lad school, too. Um, but, uh, well, that's the thing. I, I had played for a, um, for a gang of folks from lad school myself, and they are great dancers. They love to dance. They're one of the most appreciative audiences. Terrific group. That's true. And, uh, and I'm sure you, you guys are very popular up there. You wouldn't even walk around. You have to give autographs and stuff. You have to wear shades on the... It's like being in 16 Magazine. It's a lot of fun. It really is. <laughs> I remember seeing you years back in the uh, motels. Fabulous motels, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we go back to a, a lot of strange audiences uh, across the years. Well, um, yeah, that's, that's true. Well, remember, you were one of the strange guys in the audience. It's kind of, uh, uh, well, Larry, uh, I've had, I've, I've, I've had enough, about enough of talking to you on this level. Let's, let's, get to, uh, let's get to something more vital. 
I understand you are going to pull a Lloyd Thaxton, as I was doing in my nightclub ass recently. You're going to lip sync a song for us, right? I, I'll try to pull it off. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that's, that's what she said. Um, sorry, sorry, folks. Nightclub act just uh, just coming back to me all of a sudden. Oh, it's uh, it's like the old uh, Clay Cole and the, and the Dick Clark routines, and uh, it certainly saves a lot on technical expenses, and um, it could be a lot of fun too. Who knows? Okay, now, Larry, the name of this song is what? Well, this is a, it's a, a tune that the Tomcats do in South County. It's uh, something that my dad uh, told me about. It's a little uh, thing that we call uh, you grow up, you get old, and you die. Well, there it is. Sounds like a pretty interesting number to me. You get up, you grow old, and you die. That's right. Larry Brusick, right over here. Uh, unhook yourself there, Larry. And, uh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Brustick with a live lip sync of You Get Up, You Grow Old, You Die.
the genius of Larry Brusick and the Tomcats. You get up, you grow old, and you die. All right, Larry, you better shut up. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. Larry Brusick, ladies and gentlemen. What a guy, Larry Brusick. A beautiful human being, but not on this planet. Okay. The, uh, we're we're, we're going to take some phone calls now. We've got the phone ready. So, folks, here comes the phone-in portion of the show. So, if you'd like to talk to me, Jackie, Rudy Cheeks here at Club Genius, give us a call at, do I have the number written down here? 943-6706 or, or not. I don't know. There used to be... There used to be another number. I think it's 943-6705, too, right? Okay, 943-6706 or 9... It's right here on the phone. Oh, what a miracle. 943-6705. Yeah. You know, the, the Dell Telephone Company, they do just about anything. So we're going to run to a commercial now, and we'll be back in just a minute with phone calls. Yeah. What you're listening to are musicians performing psychedelic music under the influence of a mind-altering chemical called LSD. This winter, senior citizens and the disabled face increased health risks from the cold. Because the elderly have problems maintaining body heat, even temperatures of 65 degrees can cause severe health problems. This year, take a few dollars and give a senior you know the gift of warmth. For example, just a hat helps prevent a 40% loss in body heat. Thermal undergarments are of great value. So is a lap blanket. Warm slippers for the feet help a lot. And an inexpensive thermometer lets the senior know when the heat is too low. A balanced diet will help the body fight the cold. And check with your doctor to see if medications cause a need for warmer temperatures. Often the winter cold causes health problems which the elderly don't even realize. That's why it's important to stay warm and stay in touch. Oh, yes, After all, you might be able to save a life with only a five-minute phone call a day. Sure. A Contact Project Energy oh, Care, yes, Post Office Box 2970, now. Washington, D.C. Thanks a million. Everything's great. Got somebody here on the line. Let's see. Uh, who is it? It's who? Pat Bailey. Pat Bailey. Pat, how are you doing? Hey, okay. His old friend here, Pat. Uh, I, I didn't think they had the. Uh, I didn't think they laid the cable in your area. We were the first, almost. You were the first. We're online. All yes, right. In Norwood. Well, that's tremendous. Out in Norwood. Yeah, John. Here was Beth and Pam, and yeah. we just watched the World Series. <laughs> St. Louis won. St. Louis won. Oh, no. Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. I'm Beth sorry. Beth wants to say hi. Is this, what, what, Pam wants to say hi? Beth. Oh, Beth. Beth. Hi, Beth. What? You look really good. I like your, uh, your outfit. You like my outfit. Thank you very much. It's the, it's the same outfit I wear around town. I think you might have recognized well, I've always liked it. Huh? I've always liked it. You've always liked it. I, I know. I know that, Beth. But that's a that's another subject. We'll, we'll discuss a little bit later on. Yeah, well, you could watch it. You could watch it. I could watch. I have watched it. I've watched it quite often. Just okay. because I haven't gotten around to it in the last month or two, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Now we have a disgraced policewoman on the phone here. Oh. Can you can you talk, or, or, or will, won't your legal counsel let you? We made here's it. her legal counsel. Uh-oh, here's her legal counsel. Oh. If you continue, continue in this manner, we will have a suit against you, Mr. Cheek. Well, if you do have a suit against me, make it a, uh, about a 42, okay? 42, 42 short. Uh, what do you want, that velour? No, not in velour. I, I go for, like, you know, more conservative cut. Maybe uh, again. Seer sucker, okay? Seer sucker. What are you, trying to be Casey or what? All right, listen, here we go. Well, I'm not going to handle any of these uh, any of these personal phone calls anymore. Well, thanks for calling. I'm glad to see that somebody I actually know is watching this show and then calls and harasses me. I just put an ad on this show. Do you want to put an ad? A break. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, it's Rector. <laughs> okay, we have the owner of a very, very sleazy and disreputable establishment in Providence on the, on the line here. And, of course... All right. And you people who are going to be in the downtown Providence area, forget it. Don't go to Leo's. I think that's the message. Is that the message you want me to deliver? Good advice. 
Okay, good advice. Well, listen, have a good time and uh, keep drinking over there, whatever you're doing, because I'm sure there's something like that. Uh, uh, well, let, let me, let me get, I'm, I'm going to get rid of you people and go on to somebody else right now. So get out of here. Oh, who's this? Who's what? Who's what? <laughs> well, you're the one who said that. Who's this? Linda. It's Linda. Yes, Jackie's Angels say hi. Oh, hi. How are you doing? You're receiving the show in your home, too. You don't know who this is, do you? <laughs> yeah. It's, well, are you there with Suzanne? Yeah. Yeah. And is Jane there? Yeah. And Marlene? Yeah. Well, I'll meet you guys all at the uh, steam room in about an hour, okay? <laughs> well, listen, I, I want to talk to real clowns, not you guys, so get out of here. All right. Let's talk to some real residents. Who's this? This is David Letterman. David, how are you doing? Fine, Rudy, fine. Nice talking to you. Well, I've David. been a fan of your show for at least uh, three weeks, no, almost a month I've been a fan of yours. And I've never missed a show, and I must say this is the best to date. Well, David, let me tell you something. Since your voice sounds... At, it's, what, what are you doing in Cranston Johnson tonight? <laughs> well, I used to have a little time off before the show, and I just thought I'd come and catch one of my all-time favorites. Well, David, it sounds like you're sure, sure your last name is Letterman and not Tracy? Uh... Sorry, I gotta go. Okay. Well, what a disgrace, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I think that we, we, we just about had it with these phone calls now. Uh, all clowns that I know called me up. Now, if we... Oh, holy cow. Hang this up. If we can't get some phone calls, there's some real idiots out there who don't know me. I mean, instead of real idiots who do know me, then we're just going to have to give up this phone conversation stuff. But uh, next week... We're going to rerun the first show. So you folks who missed the first show, <laughs> why? Someone may ask why we're running the rerun show. The reason why we're running a rerun so quickly, let me, uh, let me, let me show you something right here. This is something I, I like to call it money. And we've got a, we've got a severe shortage of this. Uh, and uh, we're asking folks to send it in or buy some ads on the show. Call those numbers that we just gave you, 943-6706, uh, 943-6705, and start buying some advertising for the show, or else it's going to be just as stupid as this. You'd be surprised at how good I can be when, uh, when, I'm, uh, when I have some money. <laughs> so anyway, well, folks, I think it's about time to say goodbye, so I'd like to sing for you. Our relationship is beneath my swinging consciousness. Cause in my in lifestyle, you are in the way. But I love you, baby. May I borrow your jumper cables? Your check is in the mail. I love you in my special way. Thank you very much, folks, and we'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye.